In this video, we're going to take a look at a simple overview of MAVEN. First of all, what is MAVEN? It stands for an Accumulator of Knowledge. We use it frequently, especially in Java-based projects, because it manages our builds, it manages our dependencies and versions of those dependencies, and it provides us with some documentation. So the file that we think of when we think of Maven is pom.xml because that's where all of this is configured. And in this video, I'll show a, a very simple pom and I'll also show one that was generated for us so we can do a little compare and contrast. So another nice thing about Maven is it has really good support with IDEs and we'll take a look at that uh, in this video and some videos that follow. So why Maven? It's a central repository for dependencies. And what do we mean di by dependencies? We know we don't want to rewrite everything from scratch anytime we write a program. We want to leverage what is already out there that we can reuse. So many times when we look for a jar file or some other kind of library that we'll include, it will have a little Maven snippet that says just add this to your Maven POM file. The nice thing then is all you have to do is right click and do Maven update. It will find the dependency for you and it will include it as part of your final built artifact. So Maven is a universal build system. In Java, we have many choices around how to build our projects. We can use old school Java C if we just want to compile source code into compiled files. We can use Ant, which is XML based. Maven is also XML based. And Gradle is one that we see a lot, especially in Android projects that's more of a JSON format. Ant is very flexible and extendable, where Maven, not so flexible and extendable. But one positive thing that Maven brings to us is this dependency management, which wasn't so easy to do in Ant. So easy to build, and it also makes it easy to pull in new features by simply pulling in their dependencies. Now, before we get into details, let's take an overview look with an animation. And this is one of those things you maybe want to draw it out so you can always refer back to it or take a screen capture of it. But first of all, when we are defining our project, let's say our project is this thing in blue. We give it a group ID, artifact ID, and version, which we'll describe in just a few moments. But suffice it to say, that's essentially a unique identifier of this unit that we're building here. Now what's nice is that this group ID, artifact ID, and version can be used to refer to dependencies that we have when we're building our project. So in other words, we're setting up our compilation unit. We might depend on some libraries. Those libraries, if they are configured through Maven, will be set up in a very similar way. And therefore, in the dependencies section of our POM XML, we simply need to reach out and say the group ID, artifact ID, and version of any dependent libraries in a table to go find them. So you see that we label our own unique identifier, and then we can use the unique identifier of other built components to bring them into our application. Now you might say, well, there's kind of a natural progression here. Could somebody else use our group ID, artifact ID, and version to refer to us? And yes, let's say that green is something else that's being built. And the thing that is green uh, has a dependency on our artifact, which is blue. Our artifact has dependency on these orange artifacts that were built by somebody else. So you see, this can be used to set up a dependency tree, or in other words, a dependency matrix. And that's where Maven and these unique identifiers are very handy. So let's explore them in a bit more depth. If we take a look at a POM XML, I'll bring up an example. And so here's a sample POM XML that was generated for me. I use Spring Initializer to generate this, but you could really use uh, just about anything even to start a, a brand new project. You notice that the root element is project. And also before even that, you notice it's a properly formed XML file. Uh, now this first indentation is describing our project, the one that we are building. So model version is kind of like a, 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 a Maven version. You can leave that at 4.0.0. At the time of this recording, that's a fairly standard numbering system. After that, we have group ID, artifact ID, version, and packaging. So group ID is an identifier of the organization that is making or creating this application or this built artifact. And when I say built artifact, you can think of a jar file, a war file, an ear file, anything that is essentially a collection of Java compiled stuff. So that's the group that is making this artifact. Now artifact ID is an important one because this is going to play into the name of the final built artifact that we are creating with this build script. So in this case, 
the physical file name that contains all of the compiled Java code and all of the resources that go along with that code. It's going to start with plant places. Then under that, uh, next to that, it's going to have a version identifier. 001 is kind of like the very first version, and snapshot indicates that uh, this is something that's in progress. So what we're looking at today might be different tomorrow after we've done additional builds. And then finally, packaging jar indicates that this is going to be uh, that this is going to be built into a jar file or a Java archive. I'm going to just kind of show, I'm going to delete this in just a moment, but I'll show you. This will make a file called plant places uh, 0.0.1-snapshot.jar when the build completes. So you see it takes a little bit from the artifact ID, version ID, and packaging. Name and description, uh, some things for some documentation for us. So I just described it, but here it all is in a slide, if that makes it a little bit easier to uh, make some notes on that model version. We stick with that uh, group ID, who owns the project, artifact ID, name of the compilation unit, version 001 snapshot, packaging, and then description. So that is essentially describing this blue box here. Now, one note is that these POM files can get rather large, and in object-oriented programming, we know the concept of inheritance. So it is possible to say, okay, give me everything from this other POM and then let me override any values that I want to override locally. So you see that object-oriented metaphor plays really well into this concept of Maven. In that case, we're going to need a parent. And in the parent, we're going to say, okay, this is the POM file I want to inherit from. And I'm going to inherit everything except for the artifact ID the name and any prerequisites. So once again, we can take a look at this POM. Uh, this POM was generated by Spring Initializer, but there again, you can use uh, POMs and Maven for things that are not Spring. This just happened to be a really easy way for me to come up with a POM file relatively quickly. And if you are curious, if you want to make a similar POM file, this is what I did to generate it. I went to uh, start.spring.io, gave it a group of com.plantplaces and an artifact of plant places. You can probably see where those play in up here, uh, the group of com.plantplaces and the artifact ID of plant places. So you see that's one and one. I gave it a time leaf dependency and then I hit generate project. That gave me a little zip file and inside of that zip file is this POM. So here again, I don't want to confuse Spring and Maven just because they're two different things. They just happen to play well together in this example. So in this case, you see we have a parent POM. Now that's not required for every Maven project, but you do want to use this if you want to inherit from another POM file. Now you take a look, we have a group ID, artifact ID, and version. So here again, we're tagging to a specific uh, POM file with a specific release version. Note that says release. That typically indicates that, okay, this has been vetted out, it's final, or at least very close to final. Uh, it's been tested and we don't anticipate any more changes for this specific numbered version. Now there might be a 205-snapshot, something like that, but at this time we're just saying, okay, we want a final release candidate. We don't want to hit a moving target. So that's how we specify the parent. Dependencies, no major surprise here. The collection of things that we're dependent on, like the Spring Framework Library, or, or maybe some JUnit libraries, prime faces, anything else that we might have a dependency on. And you can probably figure out what's going to happen here. We're going to need to specify at least a group ID and artifact ID. Probably a good idea to specify version as well, but not always required. So for dependency, we're just saying we want these orange things that we're dependent on. As we are getting more and more mature in application development, there are more and more libraries that will make our job easier. A lot of times an effective programmer will first look for libraries that already exist before building something from scratch. And this is where Maven can be very helpful. So we take a look at our uh, dependencies and we see version, group ID, and artifact. Back to our project, let's take a look. Note that we have a plural dependencies tag, and inside of that we have the individual dependency elements. So this is a very young project, and we just have a couple of dependencies specified. Both of them are for Spring Boot. Uh, one is a Spring Boot starter test, and the other is something called Time Leaf. If you remember when I uh, generated this, this project using Spring Initializer, I said the Time Leaf dependency, and so it was kind enough to already add that for me. Uh, so some dependencies, this will likely grow as we add to our project over and over again. As a matter of fact, I can run out to GitHub 
And I can show you the last time I taught this class, the dependency section started small, but take a look. These are all the dependencies that we ended up integrating by using our POM XML. So quite a few, and it made our application development very efficient as well. So some dependencies, and then finally build plugins. This is anything that we need over and above if we need to kind of extend the way the build process works. This is anything that we need over and above that build process. Here again, if you take a look at this, um, you'll see that we have a group ID and artifact ID of Spring Framework Boot. So this is just a build plugin that's going to help us uh, use Spring Boot. Now, what's interesting is that this is a fairly small POM. You see it's about 51 lines. But now what effective POM will do is it will consider this parent notation that we have here. It will inherit all those entries and it will give us the sum POM, essentially, if we were to put everything together from the parent POM and from our local POM, we come down to this effective POM. So this isn't an actual file. It's more of a view of our POM file plus the parent POM file that we're inheriting from. If you take a look at this, it is a tremendously long file. So about 47, 4,800 lines, a uh, fairly large file. So you see that that parent is giving us quite a bit of good logic. Now, just to play around for a second, what if I create a brand new project and let's just make it a Maven project and uh, create a simple project. Uh, no, no, no we'll, we'll keep it like this. So next and sure, next and group ID, we'll call this com dot plants, uh, plant places. Uh, that's fine. Artifact ID, quick project. Okay, version ID. So this is if I were to create the, the uh, Palm project directly from Eclipse. So far, everything looks good. I choose finish, and this is going to be a throwaway project. So I'm just going to open it up just to give a little demonstration here, and then we'll close it down. So you see, this is a very simple Palm. It does not have a parent Palm. It just has our group ID, our artifact ID, our version, and our packaging, a small property section, and a very small dependencies section. So this project is just a plain old Java project, not a Spring project, not Spring Boot just a Java project that happens to be mavenized. As a matter of fact, you can see the indicators up here. The J indicates a Java project. The M indicates that it is a Maven Java project. So you see, here's our POM, a little bit smaller than the one we looked at before, about 25 lines. Now remember, we're not inheriting anything, so let's go to Effective POM. Effective POM has a few things that are added, just a little bit of Maven overhead, but nonetheless, you see it is much, much smaller so say 240 lines, it is much, much smaller than the POM that we saw earlier that has a parent and that's inheriting everything from that parent. Now, when you do have a parent like this and you do have a fairly long-winded POM, the dependency hierarchy is, is quite nice uh, because uh, what will happen is you might have a dependency on some old jar file and you don't know where it's referenced. This is a really easy way to say, okay, between my POM file and all included POM files and all parent POM files, here are all the dependencies that are, uh, that are requested. And so this can give you a look to see, okay, if it's a dependency upon a dependency, you can kind of fish down and find out uh, what is requiring this, this artifact. In this case, we have one called Spring Beans, Spring Core, so on and so forth. So dependency hierarchy is nice if you need to kind of do a little bit of fishing around there. Dependencies is kind of a quick review to take a look at what is in the POM, uh, just what dependencies we put in the POM, where dependency hierarchy shows that cascading view where dependencies have dependencies. I will tell you this, that's it is a little tricky in these POMs to uh, indicate what dependencies you want because you can put a version in there. I recommend not hard coding the version but instead set up a variable or a property for that version, just because uh, you, if you hard code a, a version of a dependent artifact, you might forget to change that. And then you'll find out that Maven is pulling down a whole bunch of different versions of the same artifact, which is going to clutter up your hard drive. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at how Maven does pull down those dependencies. If I go to my uh, hard drive, I'm going to go to C, Users, and then I'm currently logged in as administrator. Take a look at this M2 folder. This is the Maven folder. Now we go to repository and you'll see that we have some uh, folders in here. 
Let's go back and see how big this repository folder is. I choose Properties, and we see it's about 50 megabytes. Now, when I go to an application that is a Maven application, I can right-click and I can choose Maven Update Project. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose both here. It doesn't really matter. Go ahead and choose both. What it's doing now is it's looking at our POM XML, looking at the parent and all of its dependencies, and then looking at the dependencies that we've called out specifically in our POM XML. It's going to download those dependencies and it's going to place them in this M2 folder. Now it probably hasn't changed now just because I've already done a Maven update previously. Let's take a look. And sure enough, it's the same size. But one interesting thing, if one of those dependencies comes down and is corrupt, or you just think something crazy is happening, it's typically okay to delete the contents of this folder and then right click and do a Maven update. That's kind of like just deleting everything and starting anew. It's gonna take a little bit of time because it has to go down and fetch all these dependencies. But every once in a while, you end up with a corrupt jar or a corrupt something or other, and it has to jump down there, uh, and you have to clean all this stuff out. Now, just out of curiosity, what is in this M2 directory? Let's go to com, and I'll just pick one at random here. We'll go to ThoughtWorks and QDocs. I have no idea what this is. Now, you see 2.0 M7, some kind of release version that we have there. And then if I go in here, sure enough, you'll see there is an exe executable jar file. You can see a POM file as well, but nonetheless, an executable jar file, which is one of those orange artifacts that our project is dependent on, or at least some project I have on this computer that's set up as Maven. So you can physically jump down in here many times. And again, I'm just going to pick one at random here. You can many times jump down in here and you can see the version information. Here we just have version 2.4.0, but remember version was one of those unique identifiers. I click into that version, and now you see uh, this is, again is a jar file, and you see that this is JSON path and then the version number. So this M2 directory, while you don't always have to go in here, it is the repository where Maven is saving our, our, our artifacts. So that's an overview of Maven. I was hoping to do this video in about five to 10 minutes, but you see we got uh, into a bit more information, got a bit longer. Nonetheless, Maven is something that we are going to use going forward. So we'll get a lot of time to play around with these dependencies, do Maven updates and try it out. I'm curious for your thoughts. Uh, let me know what they are in the comments section. Thank you.